Hey, hey, hey. I barely made it, y'all. Ooh, Thursdays at 7 is fucking late. <laughs> like, what? I am too old for this. Okay, I think I might need to do these on Tuesdays. But look, I came with the best that I could give you guys. Okay, so I'm giving it to you raw. I'm coming in fresh. Excuse the road, but look. Okay, I mean, I did give you earrings. I mean, I did give you that. But, um, yes, I barely made it, but I'm here. Okay, so <laughs> let's get this show on this here road. So I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. It's almost time for a new year. I hope y'all have started putting those out and putting out those resolutions. I don't do resolutions, but I do a theme. So I hope you guys have gotten whatever you're going to do and your game plan on um hello welcome 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 yes people joining what's up um and i hope you guys are all prepared and ready to live your best life for 2023 because i am because i am okay yes all right so um this topic that we're gonna be talking about tonight is a little it's a little different it's a little extra okay um it's a little bit causes a little bit of controversy between the the team fuck them kids and team uh team jordan's mom right so i just threw that out there it's a random name so if your kid's named jordan i swear to god don't hang me it's just <laughs> it was just a random hashtag but um so it's a crazy thing because i guess i was kind of predetermined to not have any kids and when I find when I run into my friends who are also you know we're similar in our careers we've been in the game a little minute you know we're pretty successful in our careers and stuff and then our work life balance is we're, we're getting the hang of that shit you know but we're not like the the ideal picture perfect what you imagined you know however many years ago married with the kids and all that stuff right so we find i find we find that it is harder to make friends to um have people to do networking things with fun things with all that good stuff because everybody else mostly has a family so here's the thing it's okay um, I know that there are a lot of feelings with this. Sometimes we put on a strong face and we, we act like, oh, team, fuck them kids. And that's supposed to be our armor that we wear so that nobody can make us feel bothered or weird about being, you know, 30, 35, 40 and not have children. So to be honest, you know, I embrace it. I love it. I have a lot of friends that embrace it and love it. We move how we move. We can do how we do. I also, though, admire you know, my friends who are moms, like they're fucking amazing. They're like so selfless and they do their thing and they, they work really hard to protect their kids and their family. And they have something that they cherish deeply that can't be given to you. And I, I think that's admirable. I think that's dope. You know, I think that's something that if it ever, that chance happened, you know, if by chance I ended up that way, it would have been awesome. But that's not how it ended up for me. And so, you know, I'm going to embrace what I already have um or what I have now because at the end of the day if I always want to be living in a high vibrational super positive attract what I want get my desires type of lifestyle then I need to be content I need to be happy I need to be able to see the silver lining in the position that I'm already in and so do you rather you are with child or without so um I want to first talk about the stigmas against it, you know, of not having children. And I know, like, there has been the back and forth between moms and not moms, and this is the hardest job in the world, and all that good stuff. And I know that shit is hard, because ain't no way I could have raised my siblings, and they act how they act, and I don't be the hell bothered, okay? So, listen, I 100% get it. And, you know, parents aren't going to always get it right because parents are doing the best they got from where they're at, right? So, at the end of the day, I was having a, a talk with my best friend the other day. At the end of the day, we all going to fuck the kids up in some way, right? Like, we're just going to do the best we can. We're going to try to break generational curses. But we all going to fuck the kids up in some way, some form, because we are not perfect. And so, we cannot create perfection in our likeness, you know? 
But, you know, without having it, it's, it's a lot of stigma. It's, uh, you know, oh, you're going to be lonely. There's nobody going to be able to take care of you. All you have is your career. Oh, you can work long hours because you don't have any other obligations. You don't have any other, um, and excuse me, y'all, I'm sorry. God damn it. Okay, okay, okay. Bear with me, okay? I just need to get my titty back into the road. Um, so, it, it, you know, you, you don't have a legacy. We don't have anybody to leave our legacy to. Um, we have less to sacrifice because we don't have kids and all these other things, right? And it, all that shit's not true. I mean, we have things that we sacrifice. We have the, the same amount of time that you do um, or other people do that have children. We just spend our time differently. So my baby was my business where your baby might be a dog and your baby might be a plant and your baby might be an actual tiny human. More power to you. I learned that it's pro like... That's a very hard job, and I don't know that I want to commit to something that I can't control. Like, I can control my business. I can control my career, right? So, look, kudos. One, for the 100th time, this is not shade to the mamas, okay? This is literally like, girl, you, you do your thing, okay? Um, but I do want to talk about how, you know, women without children do kind of get grouped together, and it's like that choice versus choice. So, it's the choice to not have children, and then there's also the ones who the choice has been taken away from. And in some ways, I feel like, you know, I have been prepared this whole time to not be a mom because I remember at a very young age, not like under, not a teenager, but definitely early 20s where my mom would be like, oh, I can't see you as a mom because you're so goal-oriented. I can't see you as a mom. You don't take no shit. You're intolerant, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not going to lie, those words did press upon me and did make an impression that did make me feel like, oh, well, maybe I'm not fit to be a mom. Maybe I don't have the patience to be a mom. Maybe I am too selfish to be a mom. And it's funny to, to be where I am now and look back at it and be like, wait a minute, though, that lady was selfish, too. Like, you all perfect, girl. I mean, I love you. OK, you taught me some stuff, but you were not perfect either. And so... For you to press that upon me was kind of janky, but it's okay. I do feel like it kind of prepped the course. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everybody joining just now. But it did prep the course, right, for where, I am, where I'm at now. And so because we do tend to group those people together and say, oh, you're selfish because you don't have children, or you're lucky you didn't have children, or whatever, you don't know if their choice was, a conscious decision to not have children or if it was the result of a health issue or some other factors so I do sometimes get resentful and I have to like check myself because people don't know the full story and they just make these assumptions and these judgments but that's what most people do right so we're at, at this time in life we're kind of used to it don't mind my cognac this time stayed up until 7 p.m to talk to y'all so bear with me um, <laughs> so I just want to give you a background on my story. So once I was, once it was instilled in me that I probably wouldn't be a good mom, it was like, okay, yeah, you're right. All right. I've been overweight my whole life. And then I finally lost all this weight and I was like in the gym doing my shit, bodybuilding. Yes. I bodybuild. That's a story for another day. But like I did all these things and it was like, okay, I'm not to fuck up my body that I worked so hard for and then have a baby and can't get the baby weight back off. Right. And which was super selfish when you think of it in the grand scheme of things. But it was also radically fucking honest. It was like I worked so hard to, you know, create an image of myself that I loved and and truly was compassionate about. And it was like, I'm not about to ruin this for a kid I ain't met yet with a dude that I don't even know if I 100 percent want to be with, you know. So. I can honestly say that I've seen the memes about people saying, oh, they don't want to mess with their body to have a kid or whatever. And it's like a whole jokey joke thing. But when you really look at the circumstances, you don't know how they arrived to that decision, you know. So I just gloss over it and keep it the fuck moving. So that was my whole body issue situation. Right. And then at the time that I was finally ready to have a baby or thought I was going to have a baby because I was engaged and I was about to be married. He was like a child himself. And it was evident to me that if I had a child, he would be in competition 
of the attention that I gave my child. Not saying I don't still date, not saying I still don't want to travel, I don't still want to show you that attention as my lover, but he showed me that he wasn't emotionally mature, ready to grow and to accept another life and being in, um, being in control of the development of their feelings and their emotions. And so that let me know that I didn't want to have a child with this man. And so even when I did finally consider, that's what I thought about, right? Was this man who was not ready to be a real true partner with me. So then I said, you know, it's not that I don't want children. It's not that I don't want kids. Even though I had accepted that I wasn't going to have children, even though I accepted that, you know, um, my life is great the way it is. I said, you know what, though, if I meet the right person and I'm in love with this person, I would absolutely want to have a love child. I would absolutely want to reproduce the love that you and I have for one another and then create it into this, this human being that we get to develop and grow and nurture and just watch become something amazing. And unfortunately that didn't work out well for me because the man that I wanted to do that with ended up cheating on me and getting another woman pregnant. Um, and so that didn't happen until I finally said, you know, okay, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe this isn't for me. I'm focused on my career. I'm focused on building my business. I'm focused on, you know, um, doing physique challenges and competitions. And maybe this is not for me and that's okay. And I was okay with it. I settled into it. I embraced it um, and I just let the negative comments about me not having children roll off of my back. I'm not sure. And so, oh, not Siri talking to me, you guys. Hold the hell up now. Okay. All rings hit. Okay. Um, and then as the years went on and I started getting more comfortable with just being alone, not that I didn't love myself because I absolutely did, but being alone is, is, is something new that you have to get used to. And as I got used to being alone, I started to, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I started to wonder, like, as I started to heal and come out of my trauma and, and move forward and just evolve as a woman and finally somebody who was sure of herself and somebody who really just did not give, like, it's like the less life I have, the, the less fucks I give, right? And so as I started to evolve into that, it was like, oh my God, you know, when I realized I wasn't protected from certain things, when I realized some of the stuff I was exposed to was extremely traumatic and was extremely, um, was extremely early in my life. I usually have words for this, but maybe it's the drink. Um, but I realized that, oh my God, I want to be there for someone the way that I needed as a child growing up. And so, um, thank you, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So like, I realized that I wanted to like be there and be that person for someone. I wanted to guide and pave a way and protect and, and teach and, and mentor and all these things because I felt like, oh my God, I wish I had somebody to tell me that these things weren't okay or it was okay to feel this way or just trust yourself or everybody's different or you know whatever right all the the things you wish you heard and then i thought well maybe that's pretty selfish maybe it's selfish for me to want to procreate simply because i want to press upon them my beliefs and my lessons right so i i, I nixed that idea and it's not that because I 100% I wanted to love them. And I heard some controversy about, you know, adoption and things like that. I figured I could do IVF or maybe I had a, listen, I got a million friends. I could pay 10 G's for a little bit of a little, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, do I really want to be connected to somebody that I truly know? And so I thought of all these other options and there was controversy about being adopted and how those kids feel and how there was a whole like scandal behind adoption and stuff. So I just kind of like fell back from that. So don't be a plant mom, I'm gonna be a dog mom and keep it moving. And honestly, at this point, at this point now, I'm over 35 and I'm 100% like in tune with my lifestyle, my routine. I know where I'm going, I know what I wanna do. And I don't know if I'm ready to just switch up, you feel me? Like, I don't know at this stage in the game if I'm ready to switch up. If I had a partner or, I, I did say though, if I had a kid, I would get a, a, a au pair, or au pair, au pair, yeah. I would get an au pair and that would be fine. But 
I still didn't want to be selfish. I didn't want to procreate out of an act of selfishness. That was like my main thing. So <sighs> fast forward a few years, find out I have ovarian cancer and I, I have these tumors on my ovaries after having an ultrasound and it's like a rush fucking surgery. I have to have my ovaries removed. I have to have my fallopian tubes removed. And I can't believe how emotional that was for me. After already deciding that, hey, this is what it is. I'm not having kids. I'm not having children. I'm not going to be a mom. And to take my, my, my options away, to take my ability away and say, no, you can't, you don't have this choice anymore was, was very, it was very hurtful. Um, um, it, it is very different to say, I'm not going to have children versus I am not able to have children. And so I don't know. I went through this whole thing where I was like super emotional about it, you know, oh, great. I'm, I'm successful. I have this business and I have this career and I'm doing awesome. And what do I have to show for it? And all of a sudden, all the stigmas and all the things that people talked about, was all the stuff that was swarming my mind. That's all the stuff that was in my head. You know, who am I going to leave my legacy to? Who's, who, can, who can I love that much? I want to be able to love somebody that much, to have that really big love, that unconditional, amazing love. And I thought about all that stuff, and I must have cried at the drop of a dime every single fucking thing. It was really, it was really crazy. Like, the light would turn red, and it was like, oh, my God, you know? Um, but what I found was that now my choice was taken away and I have to find a way to be okay with this. Right. So, um, they removed the ovary. They only had to remove one ovary and both of the fallopian tubes. Yeah. Um, but turns out I could actually get IVF if I chose to have a child at this time, but I feel like I, I don't know that I want to go through all of that. That seems like I'm setting myself up for a disappointment. Right. Um, and so now I have to accept where I'm at right now and be okay with it. And so what I thought about was, well, there's other ways that I can be a mentor, that I can be impactful, that I can be nurturing to young kids as where I, from where I am right now. It doesn't have to be my child. Um, I can mentor, I can volunteer. Now I've signed up to, I go and read to the elementary school kids once a week or, um, I'm sorry, once every other week. And I can mentor other um, other people coming up under me so that they can be good, right? And that's impactful. And I have nieces and nephews and they meet me sometimes and I get to bring them gifts and teach them life lessons and teach them the things that their mom and dad won't say because they're parentals and they're not supposed to say those certain things, right? And also, I have a new dog coming so I can be a dog mom. So... I just want to say that like you don't have to be unfulfilled because you don't have children and I feel like the people who chose to not have kids um you have the right to change your mind at any time but also if you don't there are so many other ways for you to be able to fulfill and to be satisfied and to have purpose you don't have to be a mom in order to be, have purpose there's so many other ways you can contribute to the community one thing um you know is that us as black women, even though we are looked at as like the super magic, like people who always do right and always take care of everybody and stuff. Well, that stereotype comes from a lot of truth. And so we naturally want to take care of those around us that we care about and stuff. And that still makes us a mother figure. So we get to still contribute to that and make impact on people without having the responsibility of something that was spawned from us. So if this is your situation, if it's not your situation, if you chose to not have children, but you have mixed feelings, if you can't have children, you have mixed feelings, you know, you, you just really need to unpack your true feelings and break the connection of what you should be based on the, the ideals that have been impressed upon you. And just really feel how you feel about it and break the relation to the negativity about it. So you, your identity is not a mother. Your identity is not an engineer. Your identity is not a project manager. Your identity is not a business owner. It is not a sister. Your identity is you and you 
will have to figure out who that person is if you don't know yet and take the time to explore and be curious and really just come into your own and then accept where you are because there's nothing wrong with where you are. None of our life courses are the same. They're all very different and our pathways are going to look different based on our backgrounds, where we're going to go and our curiosities and, and, and our aspirations. And if you are a person who has been told you can't and you want to, once you've accepted where you are, there are, there are many choices for you to do it outside of the natural option of conceiving the regular way, the natural way and, and birthing. So I just want to put that out there for you. Like I felt like when I had the surgery and they removed everything that I was done for, but there are other options and there are people who need you. There are people who you can totally mother. I just want to say that whatever your choices are, there's no shame in being a forever auntie. Rather, it's because you just chose not to have children or because you can't. Because I just want to let you know that every woman is someone's inspiration. And that's all I got for tonight. I hope this resonated with somebody. I love you guys, you brunch bays and forever aunties. And I'll see you on the next live. Oh, don't forget to sign up for this 21 day free detox, soul ties detox challenge. And that is a challenge for 21 days where we are going to be breaking free of toxic relationships, habits, social media if that's something that impresses negativity upon you and we're going to be breaking free from all of the obstacles that are stopping you from literally being your best self and for us to be your best self for you to be your best self there are some things you're going to have to leave behind you're not going to be able to be the same person going forward and i know a lot of us identify with our careers and that is our identity and that is our whatever we have other things in life that we need to be aspiring to because one thing about it we're a number at our in our careers but we are not a number in the lives of our loved ones and to ourselves and so we need to honor that and i hope that you join me for the challenge like i said it's 21 days it's a free challenge i did not put the link in the description but i will add it to the comments once i end the live i hope to see you there we start january the 16th and um there are some perks if you upgrade but yeah, that's all I got. Again, I love you guys. Brush face for having aunties. Hey, thank you for letting me do my live in my robe. I'll see you guys next time. Okay, bye.